through a couple of things this morning, and we're going to begin with an introduction, uh, our first ever uh, Community Service Award. And we have a message as golf professionals and as a section, and we have uh, a wonderful messenger in our local newspaper, the Press Enterprise. Uh, we're so blessed to do business in this community and to have the support, uh, the collegial support and the enthusiasm that comes with uh, covering our story and the story that we want to share. And with that, and because of all of the wonderful involvement uh, uh, that our Press Enterprise newspaper has had in delivering our message, we'd like to acknowledge and thank Ron Redfern this morning from the Press Enterprise newspaper with the PTA's first Community Service Award. Ron. sports coverage. Uh, golf in our paper is uh, very important in the community and uh, we keep it at the forefront. We've got a lot of young golfers in high school out there that are making a name for themselves. We hope to continue to do that. So hopefully you'll buy a paper once in a while and read about these young folks that are driving the scores down. So thank you again very much for this award. Very appreciative of it. Thank you so much for having me. If there were a more dynamic individual, I don't know who it would be. Um, I'm uh, pleased and honored to introduce a woman who, for 17 years, uh, worked with the PGA Tour and constructed some very lucrative and sophisticated contracts, generated a tremendous amount of money for the tour, played in the WNBA for three years, was an all-star, became president of the WNBA for five years, and is now consulting and working with our parent organization, the PGA of America, and in delivering the important and critical message about engaging women and people in our effort towards 2.0. And it's a real treat for me to introduce Donna Orender this morning. And Donna has, has flown in from the East Coast and we're wiring her up right now so that she may begin her presentation. Are you wired? Uh, I don't know. Can you hear me? I hear you. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. 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 Perfect. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Donna Warner. <laughs> It's 
still is. But when economic times change, when the business, when the business um, situations change, what happens? All of a sudden, if you want to have successful teams, so the numbers were so stress, stress, uh, a lot. There was so much more of it. You had to really learn how to run a business. And in so doing, you sit down and you say, really, what's my business about? I'm a big believer that in order to do well, you look at it the intrinsic motivation. And if you start with something that you really love, which I really believe, I've been around the PGA now for 20 years. I truly consider the PGA my family. Many of you know that I have a husband who was intimately involved in the PGA. Our family has a golf business. I think there's uh, multiple courses more on East Coast, although we've moved west a little bit now. So this is not something where I'm just coming here to say, oh, this is something you should do. This is something I live every single day. And the fact that I'm a woman, obviously I live that every day. So let me, let's just talk about this. There are these people in the world, and they're called the purple people. Anybody heard of them? Yeah. How about the purple people? I love the purple people. Let's talk a little bit about those purple people. The purple people, there are a lot of them. They have money, they have influence, and let me just tell you, whether you hear them or not, they really have interest in what you do. So let me just ask you, as teachers, as golf professionals, as maybe owner operators, if you hear about an audience, and it's interesting you have money and influence. Are you interested in them? Absolutely. Right? I hear the women saying yes. Guys, are you interested? Yeah. Of course you are. I mean, I just want to make sure. Are we all aligned here? Are you interested in growing your businesses? Absolutely. Okay, cool. That's why I figured they're here. That's why we're all right. So fine. So now we have money, influence, and interest. But here's the thing. What happens when I tell you that they are business? Now, when I did this, I just, I just found this. I did this when I was at the uh, fall leadership group, and the room started laughing. And what is that? Why, why do you think people start laughing? Because, you see, it's about gender. And next to politics and, re and, and religion, the most uncomfortable thing to talk about is gender. And when you work in an industry where gender truthfully has not been a factor for the last 80-something years, and you start to talk about being something new, especially things that are alien to us, that's me talking as like I'm one of the boys. I pretend sometimes, right? Then people get uncomfortable. And that, my friends, is really the purple elephant that's in the room. And I, and I ask you to think. I ask you to think throughout this, uh, this, throughout this discussion that we have. What is really the purple elephant? It's not just one. There's many purple elephants. But if we can really talk about it, identify it, we have this opportunity to not only spread and advance the game that we all love, it's interesting, over the weekend, I just mentioned, I got an email from someone who I don't know, and I guess I should, um, it was Barney Adams. And I, and I think Carol, you mentioned, that he's a to see it forward. And it was really an eloquent e email, and he spoke about, you know, the elephant in the room, I guess he's heard this, the elephant in the room is that what guys don't really want to say is they don't want women on their golf courses because they think they're going to slow it down. <laughs> now there's a lot of research on that, and I'm sure every golf sports or every golf pro has had experience where there were women who played slower than men. But really the, the results are not there. Really women tend to play faster than men. Or do you have to argue that? The point is is that there's a feeling we can't be honest about helping different groups excel and play well so that we all benefit. He also said, wouldn't it be interesting if we put men on golf courses at 8,000 yards? Wouldn't that, of course, slow down their play just a little bit? Uh, I mean, it's hard to disagree with that. The answer would be, of course, yes. So why wouldn't we make a situation where everyone can be successful? Let me tell you a little bit about the purple people. We have enormous influence. Now I'm talking about me, not as one of the guys, okay? We, as women, have enormous influence. If we look at the total scale of the golf industry, $24.6 billion. How much influence do you think women have in accepting those kind of sales? Anybody want to guess? Yes. 75% <laughs> is a good number. 75% is a good number. What? We'll get there. Here's the other thing. We can help grow a flat industry. Essentially, what's our growth rate? Zero. Whoa. Anybody here is not happy with the zero growth rate, but all of a sudden, if you're going to bring in a whole new consumer base, the only place you have to go is, right? Here's the other thing. Who's the key to the next generation? Who's the, who's 
side where our kids go, more or less. Let me move have a little perspective because I want to make it feel like it's a gallon for everybody. And the other thing is this. Women are a multiplier of goods and services. And what does that mean? At the end of the day, if you look at all social media research, all it really does is corroborate what we've known since caveman women, that when women talk, we listen to each other. It's all about words now. As I stand here today in front of you, I don't just represent me. I represent my family. I represent my parents, I represent my extended family, and I represent all my friends. And depending on what it is, I can be a multiplier by either 30, 100, or 1,000. And based on my current, my current Facebook and social media network, it could be up to three to 5,000. Right? So do you want me? Can you tell? <laughs> Let's just talk about it a little bit. Does anybody just contact me this week? Anybody here beat? <laughs> I don't know, no, no, seriously. <laughs> I know that we're, we're changing society, right? It's still not street. But it's covered time magazine is all about the power of women. It's actually more about the economic shift, right? It used to be that in terms of dual, co dual income households, women really were at a very small percentage. But right now, there are more women working in households than ever before. And I think the shift is way over 50%. So let's just look at about the world, the changing world, because this is also important, right? If you sold all your life to ducks, and all of a sudden the climate changed and the ducks were no longer in your pond, but they were swans, what would you do? You'd either close up your business or you'd learn how to sell the swans. Right? Aren't I living swan life right now? I'm going to tell you why I'm going to go to swan life. 56% of women are college graduates. Brilliant. <coughs> Highly educated. Who played golf? Historically, we're going to stay in the same model. Generally, what's our profile? More educated than. 50% of managerial positions right now are women. 70% of new businesses are run by women. What does that mean as an advocate? We can all be very focused on corporate America, very, very, very um, powerful, but the reality is over 70% of new employees are employed by what? Small businesses. Of those small businesses, 70% of them are going to start a bunch. Daryl spoke about consumer purchases. This is no secret. What is, I think, one of the great disservices yet to be uncovered is the fact that while all industries are recognizing this, not, not, nearly, not nearly enough of them are spending the kind of dollars and resources to get that market. As I stand here in front of you today, there's no blame to be assessed in the office industry. We can say the same thing about the automotive industry. We can say it about the financial industry. We can say it about the technology industry, we can say it about banking. Every single industry has its incredible up upside to gain by understanding how to market and speak to women because of our increasing economic power and presence in the marketplace. And on top of that, this has not changed. We've always been influential, but right now we're even more influential. And just right, Daryl. Daryl has maybe 1% influence in his household when it comes to consumer decisions. And I would venture to say that's not the silk. Where's Tom Wick? Where's Tom Hedge? Tom, that would be similar in your house. Knowing Susan, right? 100% decision, consumer, Susan Hedge. Absolutely. I hope that's on tape. Please send this to her. One of the higher spending <laughs> consumers. So how does that compare to golf? We talked about what, what the number would be. We spend about $4.6 billion. I don't know about what kind of numbers you might track at the Southern California Women's Organization, but overall it's about 4.6 billion. But we influence 15 billion. I'm not gonna challenge you what clubs you can buy, although right now it doesn't have to buy clubs, which is kind of nice. That's why clubs, you know, if you don't have to buy clubs, you can be in the golf industry. Of course, that works, it's an art form, right? But seriously, 15 billion dollars. So are you paying attention to me yet? Now, these are big numbers. Hard to get your arms around 15 billion dollars. But if you begin to think about it on a per, a per facility basis and you look back to what the numbers were presented by Daryl and Nikki on the EWGA, and you begin to think that on average women spend $1,200, African American women spend $1,400, you initiate a Get Golf Ready program, you out have an outreach to women, which talks about a huge cultural shift in our industry. But we're talking about significant percentage growth to your bottom line. On 
top of that, we're talking about spreading a game that we love, <laughs> that we have an emotional connection to, that we believe in. So you begin to understand why we're so poor. Now, here's the issue. We are not the same. That is not a revelation, is it? But we're not, uh, we're not comfortable with not being the same. And I'm going to tell you that, having worked in industries my whole life, where I essentially was the only female, I can honestly tell you that I don't know that I ever really took the time to notice it until I actually got older. And then I took a step back. It really wasn't until I got to the WNBA that I really understood it. But here's the thing. You see the dog? You see his ears that are up? What makes a dog's ears go up? Right? There's, I guess I, for some reason I took out the slide. There's this dog whistle, right? And when you blow the dog whistle, who can hear it? If I was here now, your ears would be going up, would they? So if I liken that to the golf industry, saying, okay, we're blowing the golf whistle, why aren't the women hearing it? It's because we're not on their frequency. It's the same thing. Whatever we're communicating is not connecting with what they need to hear if we want to attract them. This is not a one size fit all. But it's not, I just, again, I want to emphasize, it's not only in the golf industry. It's in every industry. If you look, at, if you really take back and start to look at gender politics, gender communications, how we speak to women, you know what? The upside is unbelievable. Why? Because we are incredibly loyal. And if you want our business, you got to begin to talk to us in a way that we value. And you know what? We'll be your friends for life. We'll reward you with our loyalty and our friends. Now, if you wanted to go to Japan, let me ask you this. And you had to do business in Japan. What would you prepare to do to be successful in Japan? You would learn the language. Wait, what's your name? John Morsola. Thank you so much. You would learn the language. Good, you, you can read. This is John B. Then he got it. Perfect. All right, what else would you do? What else would you do? Oh, come on. Somebody else can read. Look like 
like us, think like us, act like us, they don't care about us. They don't, right? Right? So going back to this, when it found out working at the WNBA, a phenomenal organization, owned 50% by the NBA, everybody here, anybody here, like, where's my Clippers fans? Lakers fans? Even now? I like him. All right, well, you. So what I found out was, David, it took nine years, nine years. These things do not happen. So I said, we're going to just take the NBA, and we're really successful, and we're going to sell the WNBA. We're just going to make you the Goldbergs. Well, it came out like a, you know, a house of fire, but it didn't last for maybe about one year. And they said, okay, we're going to sell tickets. We have this great ticket selling organization. So this is how it goes. I'm going to call up Tom Wilson because I know Tom. Hey, Tom. So I'm at the Lakers here. I've got two front court seats. They're really awesome. You're going to like it. You are the man. Everyone will see. You're on the front row. What could be better than that? 1,500 a game. What do you say? What's Tom going to say? Sold. He's going to say sold. Exactly. And that's what does happen. Now, I am going to call. Jody. And I'm going to say, Jody, I have some tickets for you for the Sparks. And you know what, Jody? They're on the front row. And what's Jody going to say? I don't even know. She must be on the phone. She goes, when I call Jody, I'll say, Jody, hi, how are you? How's your family? What's happening at the association? Things good with your kids? She'll say, yeah. All of a sudden, we have a relationship just like that. If you go shoe shopping tonight, by the way, when in doubt, make sure you stop on shoes. It is downtown here. It is the entryway to everything. Not look, the women are laughing, the guys aren't getting it yet. But they will. Don't worry, we're gonna help them get there. And then I'll say, Jody, listen, I have two tickets for you. They are really special. They're in this great section. You know, I know that in addition to golf, Jody, that you really like animals. And this is a group of people that have this club, they have this dog club on the weekend, and you're gonna just love this group. What do you think, Jody? And what do you think Jody's gonna say? going to say all right. For nine years, we tried to sell Jody tickets the way we sold tickets to Tom. And we couldn't understand why they weren't connecting. And the reason is, is men want to be front row, and women want the experience. Does it make men any better? No. Does it make women any better? No. All it means is that we value things that are different. And once we recognize that, by the way, guys, at the end of this talk, all your family lives will be that much better. I'm just going to tell you. Because once we understand that, then it's just a question of trying to implement what we've learned into practice and building our businesses. So now, if we start to think about putting a gender lens on, we speak a different language. Oh, she'd say, oh, that's obvious. Yeah, of course it's obvious. But we don't really take the time to understand it. We respond to different social cues. Of course we do. And our orientation and our priorities are different. So when you put together your programs, your plans, and your golf course, it's not one size fits all. And let me just say this, not to complicate it any further. Women are not one size fits all either. There are various segmentations when it comes to women as well. And I'm sure you'd find that in your group as well, right? So why is this all true? I love talking about this. Because there's no such thing as a unisex training. And I think it's silly, right? talked a little bit about this. My goal today was to induce dopamine. I have a, no way of measuring because I think people would be learning, but I really do love brain chemistry. And there's so many different, stu uh, uh, so much research about our behavior, more and more and more explaining why we do what we do. But if you look at a woman's brain, you see somebody wants to ask me, why are there so many more connections and lights on a woman's brain than a man? And I said, really, you're asking me that? <laughs> Um, is that the limbic system and the hippocampus, their two main systems of the brain, are much larger in the women's brain and in the male's brain. The male's brain. One of them has to do with um, speech and emotional connection. Now think about this. I, don't, I always love this one. Is that my responsibility as a keeper of the generations is to be able to communicate Hello? at the most basic nonverbal level with a being that cannot communicate back to me, yet I am responsible for preserving that being's life. What does that mean I have to have as a skill set? Huh? What? It's a maternal thing. You can say it there, but what I have to, I have to be observant, right? I have to be in touch. I have to pick up, I have to pick up every little nuance to understand if a newborn baby is hungry, 
versus angry versus upset, all those things. And so that child can grow and communicate to us. Therefore, I am hardwired through my brain chemistry to be able to notice things that my husband, or maybe you wouldn't. Now, let's just take a big leap. What does that mean when I walk into your golf shop? <coughs> what does that mean when I take a step onto your first tee? What does it say when I enter your place of work and you greet me? What am I going to notice? I am going to notice things that are different than when Billy walks in. That's okay. Right? You said you want to teach each of your students as if they're unique. That's a great people work. You put a little gender component in that and understanding that from a brain chemistry standpoint, we learn and observe as women with different things. And there's a range. I don't want to put it, again, no one, no one size fits all. There's a range. But I'm just going to tell you, we are, we are wired like this just because we have a generational um, we have a mandate, right, to continue to speak. Our communication styles are different as well. We talked about communication. I enjoyed that part of it. But men live in a world of status. Women live in a world of connections. Now, why are these all important? Because each one of these elements do help define and add depth and breadth to how we do business. Men negotiate for power. We negotiate for closeness. And it's really funny, I have to just tell you, all the years I've done this, I didn't even realize how I did it. But I'll be on the phone, and people will say throughout the years, I've negotiated a billion dollar contract. Oh, she's really tough. I don't always think I'm that tough. But I'm a woman who's negotiating, right? So immediately, right, immediately the lens changes. But I always go for that closeness moment. I didn't realize it, but I always do. Are you okay? What's going on? I always make sure the end comes out a little different. My guys that I negotiate are not the same way. But now I know why. Makes me actually feel a little bit better. Um, men seek control, women seek understanding. Not, you know, and women, men look to offer advice. How, how, right? how, how many times have you come home? Susie Whaley loves to talk about this. And if you have a wife, and she'll say, so and so and so and so and so it happened. <coughs> and you'll immediately want to fix it. And she'll say, I don't want you to fix it, I just want you to listen to me. And you're like, you don't really say that, but there's the headline, the little blurb that comes up. So here's how this works out in terms of getting back to what your golf situation is. Our value, we value time, and I think everybody do. As much as technology seems to help expedite things, I don't know about you, I think it's just sucking the life out of me. Right? I'm here looking at Daryl, I'm sitting in the back, I said, God forbid I should miss one Twitter feed, check not check my Facebook page, figure out my three different email addresses, Right? But I am a bridge, right? I am a bridge to a younger generation, and that's where they all are. That's what's all happening. How many of you have, who's here? How many of you have a Twitter address in this room? Hmm. Not very many, actually. Not very many. I would highly recommend it, by the way. I would highly, especially if you suck the life out of you, too. It's a good keep in touch. It's a, it's a good business tool. tool. Anyway, so our value is time. But what is our barrier to speak? Time, right? Who's got four and a half hours? I was just another comment. What's our opportunity? Time. How do we take time and make it work for us in the game? How, and really, what does that speak to? It really speaks to actual experience differentiation. Give me an opportunity that I can show up to the golf course, I can be in a welcoming experience, and I can play six holes, have a glass of wine with my girlfriends, have a good time, and then get home in an hour and a half. So I can cook dinner, clean the house, and do everything else I have to do. Do you believe that? No, I do do that. I really, I get my money back if I cook dinner. I do not. Um, <laughs> but seriously, right? Just give me the opportunity to do that. Right now, everyone thinks I have to spend four and a half hours, and that's not happening. Not nearly enough. Would I suggest that it's a good thing for life? Yes, I do believe golf is the antidote for life. I don't think it is happening. What do we value? <coughs> Friendship. All these things I just showed you, our hypocalamus, Limbic system, all of that about women wanting to connect, be social, we're nurturing, right? What is the missing thing for women in the game of golf? Who has a, who has a let me ask you this, who has a very vibrant women's program at their place? All right, Carl, tell me about it. Um, let me go with classes and focus on that. Um, yeah? Getting all ready and also the tutoring as well. So I'm looking forward to having to get up. Okay, so what have you had? What has happened? 
happened to your number? Uh, it's gone through the roof. It's gone through the roof. Yeah, it's hard to so if you want anybody out there doing it, because then when you keep, keep all the business like that? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, the number's been really tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, really it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> With all that new social interaction, so when you begin to look at your programs, how do we help promote social interaction? One of the biggest issues women have is they can't find people to play with. Right? So, I'm sorry, you're shaking your head. What's your name back there? Huh? Seiko. Seiko, hi. Why are you shaking your head, Seiko? Because I have all my neighbors on Zoom, or by missing my high school girls, so I have all my neighbors on Zoom. We have no one to practice with. Why? Because we don't want to be alone. Have you ever seen us go to the bathroom alone? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think we want to go to the party alone? We don't. So why don't you help us? Who's got the golden recipe there to figure that out? I will say one thing we are going to have at headquarters, which is great. We value learning and education. Look at the education numbers. 50 of all college graduates. If you look at medical school, if you look at um, um, what do you call it, law schools right now, the numbers are extraordinary in terms of women valuing education. And yet, Jeff, I look to you, your partner here. When it comes, uh, huh? You got John, John, and Jeff. John and Billy. I look at both of you. Not, 
I'm going to submit to you that it was an amazing product. And everyone didn't have to like it. Not like everyone doesn't have to like all. But the point is, there were people there who wanted to find it, and it was our job to help them do that. And if we didn't do that well, shame on us. I'm going to submit to you that of those 60 million people who want to play golf, at least 20 to 30 percent of them, if not more, are women. And shame on us if we don't figure it out to connect with them to play the game. Why? Because we love the game. And two, we want to create more successful businesses. So, let me just say this. Here are things women are not interested in. They don't care about the CCs in your driver. They don't care about the speed of your booties today. They don't care who's on the beverage cart. <laughs> Let me keep. We don't care about your golf ball sales necessarily, although we do like sales, and we do not necessarily care about your after hours. But I am sure you are really good at being a man, and I am sure this has been successful for you. But for me and my girlfriends, this ain't happening. But let me tell you, in all fairness, here is what's happening. We do say yes to playing with our girlfriends, husbands, and our, and our professional networks. Now, what's interesting here is heretofore, and MC and I have had a lot of discussions about this, you know, guys get out there wanting to play. And, and let's not ignore the fact that golf has been a haven for men. It's a place you can go. Like you, the first is girls get to be girls, guys get to be guys. And the golf course is a great place to do that over the years. And that's kind of how it's been carved out. And the further you hit the ball, the more it's to the macho nation that they, we have, to, we have to speak male, not that we have to speak female. We get all that. But things are changing. Um, now what I hear a lot is that because of women and family time and all those other stresses, more men than not really would like their wives, girlfriends, spouses to play. For two reasons. One, it gives them permission to play, gets them off the hook. And two, because women understand the game, they're more apt to say, go play. So I don't care what your motivation is, there, there is a positive back end on this for you guys. Uh, respect. We want to feel valued. And what does that mean? You don't have to think I'm the greatest player, but when I walk in the room, look me in the eye and say, hi, how are you today? And if you don't have somebody at your counter or you're comfortable doing it, find someone to do it. Don Gardner, who I think he worked a lot of years at PGA now with Sarasota, he said, Don, it's so obvious. Again, if I'm going back to Japan, if I want someone to speak the language, I'm going to get an interpreter. Why would I have some more interpreters in my shop? Why would I hire young women or women to help me in this interface with women who are going to be on customers? Right? We're not even talking about diverse populations. Asians, Latinas, Me uh, Mexican Americans, um, African Americans. Look at us. Look at us. And look at America. Whew, we've got a ways to go. We want something that's clean. We want to feel welcome. We want to have fun. And I think we've just been talking about fun. Oh, it was. Um, I like that video. I thought that was really good. Um, so how do we engage them? What is that piece? Right? I know there's a whole part of Golf 2.0 that talks about knowing your customer. It's the only beginning with conscious awareness of diversity. There's a great book. I've used it to advise some of my learnings. I actually I read this book and still I, I did my dopamine went up. I saw that little neural connection because I learned stuff. Um, and it's a book by Rick. Uh, I will get you all the name of it. It's all about women as consumers. Um, understanding the values and the barriers, and really understanding that really what life is all about. And I know this is hard a lot of time for men to understand, but really, if you examine everything you do, it's really about emotional connection. You play this game because you love this game. That's an emotional connection. You might want to cloud it or couch it whatever you want, but at the end of the day, you do things because you're emotionally connected to them. We're, as women, are just more comfortable talking about that. Men aren't, but if you strip it all down, really, at the core, that's what it all is. So that is really the background about why connecting with her has become a strategic imperative of the PGA of America. And it's bigger than the PGA of America. It's, it's, it has to do with the whole industry. Over the weekend, I touched base with David Pillsbury. David heads up all the CPC clubs on the PGA Tour side. And I think they have, what, 17 of them now? 19 of them. Um, they participate in her panel. And I said, David, you're doing an unbelievable job. And for those of you who are not aware of their numbers, last year they said, we're going to embrace this as a strategic imperative. They had 6,000 total women. No, they had 3,000 women involved in their program. By the end of the year, they had 6,000. They doubled it. David, what do you do? He said, we just said it was important. Do you realize that? Sometimes if you just say something's important, you can make it happen. We have to say it's important. But we have to couple it also with executional tactics to get there. 
at our institutional pathways. This is the framework that we are using to frame everything that we are, we are doing with you, as well as from a national interest. We have education and training, so all those materials will come out, all of this learning built out in a much bigger, more tactical way. Communications and marketing. We have to do, we have to walk the walk, we have to talk the talk. Everything we communicate has to communicate that we are who we say we want to be. Does that make sense? Because we are as much about what we don't <coughs> say as what we do say. Interesting. Events and programming, what does that look like? Women want experiences. And you know what, there'll be lots of, there'll be lots of um, best practices. There's the wine and dines and this and that. But since we started this, people are really been sending in innovative things. But it's that little nuance. How does something look, feel? Bring in the women of your club. Last time I did this, I was in Colorado, and there was a guy sitting in front of me, I can't remember his name. And uh, he was, a, he was a, a owner operator. And he told me this wonderful story. He said, you know, my mom lives about an hour north of here in Denver, and she wanted to come and play my court. So I said, she said, okay. So he came down, she brought four friends, three friends, there were four friends. He said, you know what I did, Don? I put little flowers in their cards, and I gave them lunch, and they loved it. I said, why'd they love it? She goes, so I think because I paid attention to them. So what happened? He goes, a month later, the group of four grew to a group of eight. A month later, the group of eight grew to a group of 16. He says, I am selling stuff in my shop I never thought I would sell. My business is growing. My mom feels great, by the way, very key. He said, and all of a sudden, I have this women, I have 200 other women in my other programs, but what it showed me was all it took was a little attention, a little care, right? And a mom willing to play ball. I want to call this the mom ball strategy. If any of you fall in this category, I highly recommend it. But substitute out mom. Substitute in a friend, a wife, right, a neighbor a relative, these informal networks with women can start like that, and they can grow like that. A little time, a little attention, and perhaps the flower and soft look. But we don't want to be, we also don't want to be um, patronized. And the last thing is the alliance relationships. How can we, right, partner with all different alliance relationships? And it's not just the biggies, the USDA, the PGA Tour, the LPGA, the Pink Hose Associates, the AOA, the Southern California Women's Golf Association. It's bigger than that. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of little companies all around that are looking to build scale. And we think if we can unite all of them, we can elevate scale and have a lot of people too. So that's our goal. When it comes to this, we talk about embracing the evolution. If you look at all of these words, these are words that are now helping define the approach that we are taking as we build customized events. Because what we're finding is people are requesting them like crazy. And there's a business out there. So, as I said, when we recognize the emotion, we couple that with the engagement, all of those issues that are under our target market of yes, then the purple elephant, that thing about consumer connection, begins to happen in a really, real, real way. So now that we've been here for a little bit together, is it warm in here? Um, let's just talk about the purple elephant. Why don't you tell me, if you would, some of the barriers that you feel about beginning to morph your outlook to engaging women at your, at your facility. Carl, you said, yes, oh, I love you. What's your name? Robert. Hey, Robert. I had a female assistant like three, four years ago who left and did her another thing. Okay. Things were great in there as far as the ladies club business. Right. <clears throat> she left, I could not find a female assistant. So I asked the PGA if I could uh, put on the PGA link female assistant. Right. Regulations, I can't. That's correct. Which that's, I think is horrible. Well, I don't think that. I think that's bigger than PGA. I think that has to do with like the world. The wrong regulations. Yeah, yeah. But it took me three years to find another assistant. And they treat sales like the best. I wish there was a way around it. And also, I wish we had more females who would enter the PGA. Okay. That would also help to take care of that problem. I agree, or opportunity. I, 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 I never no like problem, the opportunity. Let's call it that, let's, let's make it positive. We'll switch up the opportunities. Well, what do you think, Susan? Well, oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, if we can be of service, since we know a lot of the other women, we would love to help you guys if you do need to place somebody or find somebody to place. Um, 
Uh, the other thing is uh, a lot of us are members of two organizations, LPJ and PJ, so we may know people in both industries and help you find somebody as well. But as an or organization, we're trying to look at different ways. How do we bridge the divide of the PJ and the LPJ, and how do we get more women realizing that the PJ is a great organization? You know, it is hard to walk in here. I've got to be honest. This isn't an easy place to come into every time I do this. But I now have great friends in here, so and they're so wonderful to me, I just can't wait to get here. So the environment's changing. But the reason we don't is, is because it's really, it's a hard business to be in for a woman. It's getting better. Uh, I love to hear that you're looking for a woman to hire. You know, it, it is hard because the law of the land is that you can't discriminate. Uh, we right, you can't, you can't hire based on sex, gender, or right. any of that stuff. Right. Uh, but, you know, if we can do a better job of uh, finding the women, encouraging them, that's what we all can do in this room is encouraging women that are interested in even being in the business to join the organization and we have to find better ways to get them in and going. Like, they can't shoot the score they need to shoot to pass the player ability. Huge barrier. So we've got to talk about these things and figure out ways to get beyond it. Right, right. Especially when there's such a need to get teachers who are truly passionate about teaching new players, right? Young be beginner players. If you look around the room, uh, let's say if I was to say 100% of you are all the best teachers. It's the best at what, right? I'd have to divide you up. Some of you are going to be best at teaching elite men. Some of you might be better at teaching elite women. And a percentage of you would be really good at teaching beginners. But it's going to be a percentage, right? And so without making gross generalizations, generally um, women like teaching beginners. There's something about their endorphins and their dopamine at that level that works. I don't like to make gross generalizations because I will tell you that as much as I'm here talking to a room full of predominantly men, it doesn't mean because a woman's a woman that she's going to necessarily be a great connector with women. Because there are women that aren't. There are men that are. Right? So I think that's I think it's important to know. So um, Susan usually does this part, and I like when she does it because she speaks from all of her firsthand experience. She is an amazing law professional. She is incredibly passionate, and she has so many real firsthand experiences being out in the field that she can share with you in a way that I can't possibly do. But we talk about engagement. She loves to tell the story, it's funny. She'll say, a woman will come in, and she'll say, well, where is the bathroom? And what does the guy say? Yes, exactly, it's over there. Don't tell us it's over there. Get out from behind your podium. Say, let me show you where it is. It's over here. Personal connection, relationship. You know what I mean? Ask her about her favorite customer service experience. She loves to talk about that blue box. Listen, I do too. What is in that blue box? It's tipping. What does that say? What does it say? Huh? Jerry, what does it say? It says, I love you. Right? It says you care about me. So what is the blue box? that the golf professional can deliver. What, what do you do that says to a woman that you really care about? It's really about branding. And I know, I know we're still talking about branding because all of your courses are probably, and they are all different. But just re reading this weekend again, I guess that's this weekend, I guess. How do you say that guy's name again? I always read it. Is it Pete? The guy who writes that report. Police report? The police <coughs> Yeah. So I don't know if you saw this in the past issue, but um, he wrote about a guy in Minnesota. Did you guys see this report? He goes, well, I don't think the PGA is going to like it. I, I loved it. And he basically said he looked at his marketplace, he looked at his environment, and essentially he had young, white, um, suburban male professionals. And he just switched his whole club over to service them. As if some way I'd be offended by that. I'm not. I mean, you got to know where your market is, too. As an, as an industry, we should be speaking broadly. Everyone should know that they have a welcome place in golf. But it's like, if I want to shop, I don't necessarily always have to go to Neiman Marcus or Bloomingdale's or Macy's. My kids happen to love Marshall's, right? Marshall's knows that I am going to be their customer, and I'm also going to be a Bloomingdale's customer. But it's the same thing with golf courses as well. But as an industry, we really, really need to work harder to have this much more open and run engagement that we're talking about engagement. Remember, when you blow that dog whistle, or when that whistle blows, you've got to make sure that you're on the frequency of the people that you want to hear it. You really do. You have to think about yourself. And I think, um, Jeff, right? I got that right now. No, Billy. Why do I keep calling you Jeff? We'll talk about that later. Billy. <laughs> uh, um, Billy, you talked about that. And I really like that. Make it personal. And make your surroundings 
is also new to them. I know that I think if you just want to observe this with me, it's really interesting. I guess having been at St. Andrews, you know, it's funny, the first time that I was there, um, I technically wasn't allowed to go in. Because you know, you have to do it down there, you have to stand there. But I got in. And you know, it's all the dark wood and it's all that clubby kind of thing that comes, you know, with golf. And it's very comforting in a sense. But I realized that time after time after time, it's a very kind of male environment. It is. I'm not being judgmental. All right? I'm just, I'm not being judgmental. I just want you to hear that. It just became an observation. And after a time, you know, here we are. It's 2012. Where do young, whether urban or suburban people want to go? Are there any of you in this room? <laughs> Where are you? Where are you? Where do you want to go? You know, you want something that's got a little glass, right? Maybe something that's a little more translucent, a little more transparent, that feels a little more cutting edge and modern. It can still be translated to golf, but where are those facilities? And it's something you can bring your girlfriend to if you want. It's something where a group of women can come to. That's why I like the, what's that place in Chicago? I love that place. Top Golf. That was a lot of fun. That could really help me with this too. And remember, even the smallest details mean something to us. When you put our stuff, whatever it may be, in the back of your golf shop, what are you communicating? Two things. One, that you're not generating enough dollars per square foot to make it worth being in the front. I get that. But two, you're also conveying something of, in terms of relative importance. And that's where relatively underscored. And we get that. So without taking up a lot of square footage, there are creative and innovative ways. Yes, sir. Well, you know, most golf pros buy ladies' clothes like they buy men's clothes. They buy uh, 15 uh, red shirts, 15 blue shirts. Uh, women don't like that. Women like to have eight pieces of seven different companies uh, coming in every three weeks so that they have something to go around and look at. And they want shoes that match, not necessarily in their size, but that they can order. So you could buy seven different colors of green this year and some orange and put those in there and let them order them. I go into golf shops and I see guys ordering women's clothes who have no idea, they've never asked their wife, what do you like the best about shopping? Not necessarily buying, they like shopping. They want to come in and look around and see something different. If you only bought eight pieces different sizes so that all the women weren't wearing the same clothes, you'd sell ladies' clothes. Have you had success with that? Huge success. I guess hunting. Okay. <laughs> Maybe the Sadoc seven years ago was really hot. It was the first line that came out that was different. Right. Now people are copying her. But, but that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. That's but it's true. Thing. All the guys, you know, you, wouldn't, you see the PGA guys, it's all due to them. Um, and people wake up and say, look at my color tie today. And you guys will look like you look the same. There's comfort in that uniformity, right? You guys have your uniform. Now you look at our uniform, none of us, right? Nikki, we don't all look alike. And um, we want to look alike on some level, but not the same way you do. Tom, I love the South Southern California. I love the, the yellow tie. It looks, it looks all great. You know what I mean? But when I go to the golf course, I wanna, I don't, I don't want to look like you. <laughs> Is that okay? I would rather look differently, also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can talk about that. Uh, this, this, I, I think, uh, hold on a second, hold on, hold on. No, ooh, oh, that's bad. What happened? <laughs> ah, there we go. So this is just the educate thing. I think we talked about that in terms of style, in terms of get, get, golf, get golf ready and how important that is. Um, is it entertaining? Is it fun? And let me just say this. This goes, I, I like to start out with identifying why you're in this business. I, by the way, I wake up every day. Am I doing what I want to do? Am I happy doing it? What can I change if I'm not? If you are happy, what does that say to your customers? Right. If you're happy, they're going to be happy. If you're miserable, guess what? Don't come to work. Exuberant staff equals exuberant customers. If you're in the fun business, then be in the fun business. It doesn't make it any less serious. But heck, you chose golf because it was fun. <laughs> and lastly, here's the thing. The studies show that women essentially have two and a half hours of me time. And I'll tell you, I struggle for that me time. We are so <coughs> conflicted. God, if I do this and then my kids don't get that and then they're not going to get into Harvard and then their lives are going to be failures, what am I going to do, right? I, it, we, you have to earn my me time. And you know what? I think it's fair to say, ladies, that 
we're giving you that opportunity to do that. You can either do it or you don't. It's up to you. But the rewards are pretty significant. So think about energizing your staff, your mm -hmm. business, to earn my me time. Right now we're $15 billion if you add any kind of incremental participation based on the availability out there. What I love about doing this is that when I was at the WNBA, I felt like I had to create women's basketball fans. Some of you probably sit there and think, oh God, did she really think she could do that? They're terrible. But there are other people saying, you know, it's really great. Here, women are at the gates. There are so many women that want to play. They're just a little scared. They want to feel welcome. They're looking for an invitation. God, shame on us if we don't look like that. Right? We're all looking for an invitation. You can create an experience. Try to be encouraging. Right? Give them the empowering spirit that, it, that it comes with, you know, giving the ball off the tee. <coughs> Sometimes, I thought it was just the beginning one. We just gave up a couple of Who cares? Right? The opportunity to learn, the opportunity to make ourselves better. All of those things. Everyone in this room is capable of doing that. And we talked about it. And thank you for bringing that up, by the way. This whole idea of broadening our employment base. And it's not only at Green Grass, it's everywhere in the industry. I'm happy to see this wonderful group of young women here working at the section office. I think that speaks a lot. I think there's a lot of very viable careers for a wide variety of people in golf. And we have to start thinking about that and we have to hold ourselves accountable because we're a group of small businesses at the end of the day. And it's really hard to be what you can't see. And I can tell you working with African American women the way I have, um, trying to help them realize their dreams. If you can't see what you want to be, it is so hard to see that. And so I feel a responsibility to help put people in places where other people can see them. Because we all have the opportunity to inspire people. And so when we talk about expectations, we can't do it without like having like, I guess, really a hard goal. And so after talking to the guy in Colorado, after talking to David Pillsbury at the PGA Tour, I was just thinking about it. There were these women I met in Atlanta. Is it unreasonable to expect that based on what you have currently at your courses, women participating, that with a little bit of focus, you can double that number? Rock, can you double that now, Mr. Rock? Can you uh, I'll take that. Right Rock? Now, right now, my right now my 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 uh, my, my database clientele is, is fifty six percent women. Right. I, I would take I would take that. You but can do that, yeah, right? I, I in year one, you can double it. It's probably not even enough scale. It's probably a lot more upside. I feel like in a little way we're sandbagging it a double. But you know what? You go out to the industry and say, you know what? The amount of women who participate in the game doubled this year. It's a pretty big statement. It's only going to double if you do it. I don't know, Jerry, what do you, you tell me, what do you think? Doable? No question it's doable. I think the product of the golf course that traditionally been untrained as a women. The country club uh, team for the ladies is going to hump instead of being on the surface poking out the way they can play. Golf course is way too long for them. We brought up the 8,000 yards. Got a women's golf Everybody here can do that, right? 
now we're training, that all of a sudden you just want to play. Because we can do it. You can walk out the store and do it. It's that easy. Oh my goodness, it's that easy. So lastly, I just want to leave you with this last thought, which is this whole idea of emotion. Don't run from it, guys. Right? It's in you. It's in all of us. You don't have to talk about it. You know what I mean? We don't have to sit hold hands and sing kumbaya, but just understand that when you are selling a product, really, the product wins when you get that emotional connection. And for everybody, it's a little bit different. It's not going to be the same. Men's emotional connection, I did this speech for about 500 and something kids recently, and boys came home. And I want to talk to them about being healthy and fit. It's very funny. And I was asking about sports, the wives go, boys, what do, you, what, you know, what do you like? We like to win. We like to kill the other guy. You know, it's like, it was really funny. It was totally, absolutely what you'd expect. And I said to the girls, we like to be with our teammates. Really, we like to help each other. I mean, all those things. So it's okay. It's really okay. But each one of them has a different emotional connection. So just understand it. Engage. Engage along those lines. And remember, at the end of the day, you're all acting to be professional. You came into this because you love the game, because it brings you joy. And God, let's not be selfish. Let's make sure we can share that joy. And in so doing, we will build better, better businesses. And then in so doing that, our families can live better lives. Our communities will be better off. Um, and all of us, you know what? We can go, all go home living happily ever after. And I don't know if that's like a little female bow on this story, but I think we all look happy. Thank you very much for inviting me. assessment uh, of how a woman might feel playing golf at your facility. Um, are there ball washers at the ladies' tee? Many times that's uh, an oversight that sends a very strong message, and uh, uh, the ball washers generally at the men's tee. Um, restrooms are of critical importance, and I would uh, encourage all of us uh, and all of you to just ensure that they're perfectly clean and uh, uh, welcoming. And Donna, I just, uh, once again, we're so grateful. Uh, there's an awful lot to do, and I think the sky's the limit. We're going to make a couple of introductions as we uh, begin what's an informal session today. And I'd like to begin by introducing the past presidents that are in the room. Um, Patrick Casey, I believe, is here. Patrick. Jason Taylor. And Tom Addis, I believe, the only past presidents in the room. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. chapter board members who are in the room, just stand for a moment if you would please. Any section board of directors or chapter board members. Thank you for your service and your dedication. <laughs> we have um, uh, a couple of very special guests. What we do and what we endeavor to do is made better by having people uh, that work with us, our allied associations and our sponsors. Um, and we've got our partner, the WSCGA, in the room today. And I'd like to introduce Pat Blaylock, Jody Nickel, Kay Bailey, and Judy Altshul. <laughs> and the executive director of the SCGA, Kevin, I, Kevin's right there. Hi, Kevin. Kevin Dean, thank you very much. And Frank, uh, thank you. We also have uh, extraordinary relationships with many sponsors, and those who are um, here with us this morning who put this program together and uh, have been so very kind to us, I'm going to introduce. Uh, and the first is Greg Twiggs with CIG, Golf Insurance uh, Services. Greg is an expert in the world of insurance, he is most helpful whenever we have questions. Uh, has been a, a fabulous sponsor for us. And Greg, I'd like you to come up and, and say a few words, please.
uh, us in this meeting and, and the golf industry has been obviously I've shared with you before a great friend to me but um, just so you know um, last year I moved over to golf insurance services and I made sure that we moved here um, brought a key sponsor that is involved with you guys in CIG and, and out in the West they're very prominent so we're going to continue to grow um, our relationship with you guys and we're here for your clubs we will be the only ones standing while tornadoes are blowing in Alabama because we don't insure west of uh, east of Texas so our rates will be better but more importantly we're a resource I have some material for you guys um, at my little medicine There's some new ADA, um, actually the 15th is a new ADA laws for golf. We also have a new register law to find the state of California. So uh, at least I can keep you up to date on what the state thinks is the best for your course. So if you guys, any operators or managers want to come by and have a little packet I can give you, but more importantly, we're here for the section, we're here for your courses, and um, just pick up my card, and trust me, there'll be a question, we're a resource, you don't have to carry our insurance to give me a call and get any questions about errant balls flying, or uh, angry women that aren't, you don't have their shoes in your shop, and they go hairy carry to get a good pair of shoes. Watch that, Twiggy. <laughs> no, my wife was in the mall, I'll give you the perfect example, was in the mall the other day, there are a thousand stores that we walked by. The ones she made me stop at were the French new golf shoes. That if I had those shoes, I'd play golf in here. And my wife played professionally, so that'll tell you, of all the places we walked by, she found the golf shoes in the window of a thousand shoes. So uh, it, I believe everything Donna said. But thank you guys again, and please feel free to call me. Anything, I'll be growing our relationship, and it, it starts with each one of you guys. So thanks. Great thanks, as always, for your continued support. And we also have with us this morning um, the title sponsor from U.S. Food Services, uh, Mark Mejia. Mark, please, thank you. First of all, uh, U.S. Foods is proud to partner with the uh, PGA of Southern California. In our first year, uh, we are here to help you grow your business. We understand that uh, times are difficult, not only in clubs, restaurants, uh, everywhere and uh, we have new tools to help grow your business uh, we now not only just take your order and deliver high quality of uh, food and uh, service but we also have marketing tools to help you grow your business such as uh, direct mailers uh, menu profit pro and uh, loyalty programs so uh, we're proud to be sponsored and if you have any questions please see me after the meeting thank you so hard on putting the program together today. A round of applause. I've asked Tom to come up. We have um, a great gift in this section, and it is our section staff. These are remarkable people at every turn. And uh, Tom is going to introduce a couple of new team members. And if you would, Tom, please. Thank you, Jeff, and good afternoon. Yeah, it's afternoon. So thank you, Paul, for being here today. Uh, we think this is a great opportunity for all of us to spend some time together and, uh, and learn, uh, and I believe we have, and, and uh, especially become motivated to do better as, uh, as golf professionals and operators. 
Uh, speaking of doing better, we are very, very fortunate that we have uh, a great staff uh, that works for you, works with you, uh, and is dedicated to working with you and for you. So uh, first off, I'd like to express my appreciation for uh, the, uh, the fine uh, people that we have, uh, that I have the opportunity to work with on a daily basis. I'm going to take just a moment to introduce a couple of people right now. I think, yeah, David Myrtle. David is our foundation director, and <laughs> David's been with us for 10 years and does a magnificent job and is uh, picking up a lot of the slack uh, that we uh, were presented with when Mrs. Gatch uh, left to, to go to work with the PGA, and, and we're very proud of Nikki for what Nikki accomplished uh, as uh, our assistant executive director and working with our foundation. And fortunately, we get the opportunity, we have the opportunity to work with Nikki uh, almost on a daily basis, just as we do with, with Ken Farrell. So we, we appreciate that as well. Uh, David does a great job uh, working with David. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Sharon Kerfman. You all know Sharon. Uh, Sharon is our membership manager. <laughs> Sharon's in her uh, 15th year, celebrates her 15th anniversary with us, uh, with the Southern California PGA this year, uh, and we're very, very proud uh, to have to continue to have the opportunity to work with Sharon. Uh, I'm especially proud on, on a daily basis as well, so thank you, Sharon. You've seen uh, this young woman uh, motoring around all morning, uh, along with Amy, and, and handling this meeting and putting this meeting together with David. Uh, and uh, Alex is our growth of the game manager, Alex Teagles, Alexandra. <laughs> Alex worked very, very hard to, uh, to put this uh, program together, and, and we really appreciate that. Amy Stadelman, Amy is uh, new to the staff. Amy, Amy came to us uh, from uh, uh, Texas Tech University. Uh, also worked with Daryl Crawl in the uh, Northern Texas section, uh, and uh, so has uh, great experience. Amy is our uh, tournament uh, and events manager, and has uh, been thrown into the uh, lurch uh, very brief, excuse me, very quickly, uh, and we're very proud of the work that uh, Amy's done. Amy. <laughs> Amy is also going to be handling or coordinating chapters, so those of you who are uh, participating in the chapters, especially on the board of directors, will uh, have the opportunity to work uh, really on a daily basis with, uh, with Amy uh, over the coming years, so we're excited about that as well. We just hired a new junior manager. Took, uh, uh, Nick took his position just after the first of the year, uh, after graduating from uh, the, the Professional Golf Management Program. Uh, just finished his PGA testing, so it's a matter of time. Uh, finishing his time before uh, Nick is awarded PGA membership. Uh, Nick came on as one of our junior tour managers uh, and is doing a great job uh, with Stefan Hebor uh, together with Mike Mecca and form a, a formidable and very, very organized and very dedicated team. Uh, and Nick's in the back of the room. Nick, thank you for being here. A young man, I think he's in the room. Uh, I've had the great, I guess, great fortune. I don't know. Some of you do. Uh, his father may not think so, but or know his father. Uh, I happen to think he's a great person, and, and uh, this young man takes after uh, his father, Jim Camioni, and that's Thomas Camioni, who works uh, in our junior field staff and, and also helps out in the office from time to time. Thomas. You saw Thomas uh, running around all over this morning as well, getting set up and, and, uh, and working very hard. Uh, we also have a new communications manager. And uh, uh, Chris Austin left right after the first of the year, as most of you know, uh, went on a search. And uh, we're very fortunate uh, to have Brianne Lockard, who is from Southern California, Huntington Beach, as a matter of fact, very soon to move out into the uh, Inland Empire. Jeff is going to talk about it, but uh, we're just about finished with uh, uh, the acquisition of the building over here. And uh, so we have uh, many of our new staff, some of our, our more uh, veteran staff also moving out into this area. So uh, 
uh, Brianne took over, we'll be handling the magazine, we'll be handling our e-news, we'll be handling everything dealing with communications, and uh, just like any of our, the rest of us and, and all of our staff, we're here to serve you, and Brianne is, uh, is very uh, excited, very anxious about helping you for, with whatever you need, whether it's uh, social media, whatever it might be, and uh, we're excited about that, and we're excited to have uh, Brianne with us uh, as well. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. I think I got everybody, did I? Yep, so uh, again, appreciate it. Thanks again for being here today. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the day, and, uh, and be safe in, in your travels. Thank you. Tom didn't introduce but himself. Uh, I've known Tom for 40 years, and I can tell you that he's not only been a gift to the game and business of golf, but a gift to everyone in this room and everyone who's uh, ever had the notion that golf might be uh, something they want to take part in. So thank you, Tom, for all you do. Thanks. We have so many resources and so many wonderful opportunities to call on one another and this collegial association that we're all a part of is, is strong and vibrant and uh, we should take advantage of these relationships and uh, all the wisdom that's in this room, uh, not the least of which is Ken Farrell, our employment uh, chairman serving the uh, PGA of America here in Southern California. Ken has been a gift to all of us, so thank you, Ken, very much. And finally, uh, we have a short presentation, um, yet another, person from the mothership here um, to visit with us. Uh, Heather Andrews is here to talk with us about many of the benefits that uh, uh, we as PGA members and friends can take advantage of. So Heather, would you come forward, please?
you can get things like that as well, even for yourself. Another great advantage of this program is that Atlas is extending this benefit to your club members as well. So outside of you being able to participate, you can extend this mem uh, program to your members. In the packets that you have, there might not be the, uh, we just redid them, but if you visit pjlinks.com, it provides all of this 1-800 information that you can post on your uh, websites or in any flyers that you have that you produce off to your uh, members, and they can receive the same savings. There's a dedicated 800 number, as well as you can access the online quoting tool that's available on pjlinks.com. KitchenAid as well, uh, we have launched this program, but they've added another benefit program to this as well, that now you can do a lot of their small appliance brands as well, um, countertop cookware, all at shopkitchenaid.com. There are flyers on the table for this as well. If you have not got on and signed on for the KitchenAid VIP link program, I would definitely encourage you to do that. They are always emailing out different types of programs that we have, um, they come out with on a regular basis. So around Father's Day, they'll offer all kinds of different things. And they have other additional discounts that you can get on top of that just by being a member of VIP link. So not just for yourself if you're redoing a kitchen or you need a washer and dryer, we actually have had a lot of facilities be able to save a lot of money on washer and dryers for their facility and other uh, large uh, appliances that they need for that as well. So not just thinking about yourself, but also for the facility, you can take these benefits as well. And then like I said, the flyers are in the packet so that when you get home, you can sign up for the VIP link program, which is the best way to access the portal to order all of your appliances. We have re-signed our agreement starting in January. If you weren't with us in January in Orlando at the merchandise show, we have redone uh, our relationship with National Car Rental. On the packets that you receive, there's a small card to help you uh, remind you when you get home that you are eligible for yourself and for a spouse for a complimentary Emerald Club membership, as well as the program is different from the original program that we had with National. They are now offering flat daily fee rates instead of the discount off the best available rates. So this is a more competitive program that we have. Um, and they also are also offering a program to your club members as well that you can extend out the <coughs> benefits as well. So they can, they can get up to 25% off the best available rate for that. So the program that you have with National is a little bit different than the one they have. But the little card that's on all of the packets today explain all of the information that you can provide to your members and the codes that they need to use when booking their rental. We also, through our relationship with National, now have a program with Enterprise as well. So you're able to get discounts through both of those programs. This is a 5% discount off the best available rate. Um, and all of that information is available on pjlinks.com and on the cards that are at your table. We also signed a new relationship with Weston. They are now the official hotel and resort of the PGA of America. So you do need to access the link through pjlinks.com to access the rates that we have available. It is 10% off the best available rate. Um, and you can visit uh, pjlinks.com to see all of the uh, Weston, Starwood, all those uh, resort chains that they have. You can see uh, a whole bunch of them up there. The W's, the Sheraton, St. Regis, and the Elegance Hotels are as well. Omega has also become our official timekeeper of the PGA. We do actually get benefits through this one where you can get discounts on watches. With our previous partner, there was no personal use program, but with this one there is. You can get 20% off an Omega timepiece. They either need to be purchased at an Omega boutique or through the phone. So you can visit omegawatches.com to view all the timepieces, and then when you're ready with your selection, you can call the 800 number and make that purchase. Or if you do come across an Omega Boutique, you can also go in and make those purchases there as well. You will have to provide your membership number when you do call or visit the boutique to get your discount. You are eligible for one watch purchase per year. Uh, the next set of programs I'm going to go, uh, go through are really great for your facility. The first is the Shalom Vineyard, since you're here in the California area where they are located. They offer a lot of nice programs where you can get exclusive VIP tours for your club members if you want to set up some programs with them, maybe a day trip to do that. They'll also review your wine list to see if you have any white space on that wine list, any suggestions that they might have. They also have a lot of uh, great merchandising tools, so if you contact your distributor by visiting pjlinks.com, you can get some great information from them. 
and create that relationship with your local distributor. Another is TG Authentic. Have any of you in the room purchased any um, items from TG Authentic to date? Oh, buddy. Well, if you do, the section can actually benefit through receiving um, incentives for the purchases that you all make. Uh, you would contact your head sales rep this month, last January. Uh, it's a great program. Even if you're not purchasing it for yourself or uh, having it in your facility, you can also purchase it for staff uniforms. It's great branding. Has a PGA on several items, and then you can also logo it with your uh, PGA logo, as well as there's both retirement plus incentives available in this program. So if you haven't, make sure you contact your uh, head rep. They also uh, launched a garb line with uh, children's apparel in January at the show as well. So if you carry children's apparel, uh, you can also participate in the PGA Authentic program. We've also signed a deal with United Rentals, so you might want to make note of all this information. If there's going to be any capital improvements at your facility, you can get 50% on savings on equipment rentals. Sometimes it's much better to rent equipment than it is to purchase. Uh, make a huge capital purchase for an item you need for a month instead of for 12 months out of the year. The section benefits if you do a rental, as well as there's golf retirement plus incentives available through this program. You can visit pgalinks.com to receive all of the information on if they're where your local distributors are and to take advantage of this program. In January, we also signed a new agreement with Danny King. They've become the official cleaning company of the PGA of America. They are offering all facilities a complimentary, no obligation uh, cleaning consultation for your facility. Uh, they offer a lot of solutions if you do already have in-house cleaning uh, people that are in there doing that, that that doesn't affect the relationships that you have with that company. So if you want to go ahead and uh, visit pjlinks.com and have Danny King come out and do that complimentary consultation, we encourage you. We uh, are very fortunate to have them as a brand new sponsor. We are continuing our relationship with Lexmark, and the reason I have this slide in here is that we do have a new a website that has expanded uh, services for toner, ink, and for the equipment as well. It's shoplexmark.com slash PGA. So outside, if you were purchasing your items through OfficeMax, this uh, website offers you expanded types of products and services that you can buy all in one for your facility, or you could be making a purchase for a small desktop printer for your home as well. So shop.lexmark.com slash PGA. And in the package you have today, it kind of uh, it outlines a lot of the retail solutions for golf as well. If you're looking for better merchandising solutions, uh, for higher quality signage for your shop as well, there's a lot of those items available through the program and the flyers in the packet as well. We also have a relationship with Oasis Outsourcing. They are a professional employment organization. The section will benefit if you sign a contract with them, as well as their spot retirement plus incentives available. One great thing about Oasis as well is that they offer benefits to you whether you are a member or not with them. Um, a lot of clubs we've seen taking advantage of the free federally compliant handbook that they offer. A lot of facilities do not operate with a handbook and it's very, very important that you do have those handbooks in place and you can get a free one through them by just visiting pjlinks.com. They also have a lot of educational resources that are available to you even if you are not a client if you were looking for some education as well as some other types of things, tips training for your bartenders and things like that, all of this is available at no charge to you. Validex does employment screening. We really encourage you if you're not in screening your employees at this point in time, you really should be. TJ of America headquarters actually uses Validex for their employment screening and all apprentices that are entering into the professional golf management program at this time are going through a background screening. So if you are having people come into contact in your junior programs, you're bringing people into your facility that have not been background checked, we really um, encourage you to do that. The cost of doing that background check is much better than the cost of a bad hire. We've heard some very terrible situations out there where a simple $5 motor vehicle background check could have saved lives and could have saved uh, you know, a facility a lot of risk management nightmares by just doing a simple background check. So we encourage you to do that. If you do use Validex, the section will benefit from incentives as well as there's golf retirement plus incentives available as well. So I only went 
over what are the new programs as of the last 18 months. In the packet that you received mm -hmm. is a full outline of all of the member programs available uh, to you. And this is just uh, an outline of what those other programs are. And then as well, we're also constantly communicating to you via PGA Links News, PGA uh, Links.com, the messages of the day, the did you know, also in PJ Magazine through our pages in there with the sponsors as well as the spotlight. So that's the way we will continue to be communicating all of our new programs to you. If you have any questions, I'll be available for a short period of time after the meeting that I can help you because usually in these large settings, people don't have a lot to say to me, but that's okay. Um, but I appreciate your time today. I hope there was at least one thing that you learned or one new benefit that you will be able to take back to your facility and implement or for yourself as well. So I appreciate Tom and Alex's time helping me get me out here to Southern California from Florida and I hope you have a great rest of your meeting. Um, when Rolex, we had a relationship with them for many years, and they had a 20% uh, program, uh, much like Omega does now. Did any of you take advantage of that and purchase a Rolex? Any of you likely to purchase an Omega watch? Yeah, nice. Um, and just a curiosity for me, how many of you are enrolled in golf retirement clubs currently? Yeah, great. Well, this sort of brings the meeting to a conclusion. Uh, we're going to now have an opportunity for Tom Wilson to introduce our next guest, and we're going to adjourn in a moment for a board of directors meeting, but before we do, um, if there's anything that I can tell you, or if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, if you'd like to take advantage of the opportunity that we have right now being together. Tom had mentioned the headquarters building. It's a couple of miles from here. It's about 8,300 square feet, completely finished inside. It's really beautiful. And uh, we've been looking for almost two years now for a uh, headquarters building, a place to relocate the section and its activities, and um, believe that we finally found just a perfect home. So there, take that. <laughs> It's about two miles, Jerry. It's right off of Haven. It's literally the epicenter of the section. And, and the location just couldn't be better, and the building couldn't be more lovely. Uh, and the fact that it's finished inside uh, with the highest uh, of upgrades, it, it really is uh, something you're going to be proud of. And it's large enough um, so that we can conduct education, new member orientations, board meetings, meetings like this. Um, they're in the building, so we're, we're going to have a, an awful lot of opportunity, uh, and nothing but good is going to happen. Any questions? Any thoughts? Yes, please, Mr. Stevens. Sir. Is it a purchase or a lease? It's a purchase. Yeah. Mark had asked if uh, we were buying the building or, or leasing it, and we're, we're hoping to buy it. We've made an offer, and the offer was accepted, and we're at the purchase agreement stage now, working out a couple of